All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, we are a webinar uh, where we cover um, a variety of things um, related to libraries. Um, Encompass Live is broadcast live um, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We record all of our shows and post them on our website, and I'll show you that at the end of today's show, so you can see where those are all posted. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you do see any topics, any of our upcoming shows, our recordings you think might be of interest to any of your uh, colleagues, friends, neighbors, family, anyone, um, just send them to our website and have them take a look at it, sign up for our shows or watch some of our recordings. Um, we do have our recordings going back to the very beginning of the show, which we actually started on Compass Live in January 2009. So there's a lot of old stuff in there, of course, um, but everything is dated. Um, we're librarians, so we keep everything for historical purposes for archives. So you will find some things that are dated or no longer up to date in there, but everything has a date on their presentation. You should be able to tell what things are the old info and what is the new info, but we keep it all out there just in case. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services or products, things that we think people may be interested in, um, and this covers all types of libraries. The Nebraska Library Commission is the state library for Nebraska, and we serve every type of library in the state, public, academic, K-12, special, um, museum, basically anything. Really the only criteria of the show that is something library related, something libraries are actually doing, something, some new programs and services, or something they think they should be doing or could be doing. Um, we have some sessions that are done, um, presented by Nebraska Library Commission staff, um, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have today. Um, we have a group of people with us here today, and um, I think I will um, hand over to Beth, because Beth, you were going to introduce... Yes. Uh, um, Beth Nolinski, I'll do that, um, is the um, Executive Director of the United for Libraries. Um, the Association of Library Trustees, Advocates, Friends, Foundations, you may have heard known as ALTEF and other previous incarnations over the years, but now it's all united for libraries. And um, we have a presentation today about um, Book Club Central and um, some exciting things we're going to be talking about. So I think I'll hand it over to you, Beth, to uh, explain what we're going to be doing this morning. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Krista. And it's a pleasure to be here again as part of Encompass Live. Uh, United for Libraries really loves working with the Nebraska Library Commission and all of the passion that you have for your libraries and, and supporting everyone. So it's a great partnership in the statewide group membership. And those of you on or watching the recording in Nebraska who are not aware, be sure to check out uh, the United for Libraries website, uh, ala.org slash united slash Nebraska, to see mm -hmm. all the great resources resources that you all have access to and if you look about mid-August uh, there's a recording of me talking about all of those great things that you have access to but today we're here to talk about Book Club Central and National Friends of Libraries Week so I have up here this is one of my favorite quotes about libraries and I include it in all my presentations what is more important whoops I actually skipped right past that my apologies my thing off here. What is more important in a library than anything else, than everything else, is the fact that it exists. And I really, I believe that and I take that to heart when I go out and I'm talking about libraries to everyone that I have an opportunity to talk to libraries about because even people who are not library users themselves, um, when they understand the value and the importance of, of the existence of the library and what it means for um, us as Americans and in our democracy, uh, then they are, and be, can become great advocates for the library. So I like to always spin in that piece of advocacy because we're here for libraries, to port libraries. We all have that love and passion for libraries. Okay, so again, we're the Association of Library Tr Trustees, Advocates, Friends, and Foundations. We're part of the American Library Association, and we represent about 5,000 uh, group and personal members around the country. Uh, this includes, uh, that's actually higher now because as of October 1st, we just welcomed on South Dakota and Maryland as statewide group members, uh, along with Michigan and Texas, following in the footsteps of uh, Nebraska that was actually the very first state to do that statewide group 
membership and provide all trustees, friends, foundations, and library staff resources to help us all work together because when all of those support groups work together with the library, there is such powerful things that we can do to support the library and have solid funding. So our mission as an organization is to support those who govern, promote, advocate, and fundraise for all types of libraries. So today, this is this, we are right in the middle of National Friends of Libraries Week. Um, and so many people out there don't really understand what friends groups are. I think more people can understand the concept of a trustee, uh, but less so about what a friends group is. Although when you say use book sales, most people go, oh yeah, I've been to one of those. Yeah. So we are now in our 12th year of celebrating this. It is the third full week in October, and it's an opportunity to celebrate within your friends group, your library, and your community. And it's also an opportunity for library, the library and trustees to thank the friends and express appreciation for their support. Now, if you're watching this today live or you hit the recording and you're thinking, ah, it's in the middle of National Friends of Libraries Week and we didn't do anything, don't worry. You still have time and we have some easy things for you to do. And then next year you can pick up and, and uh, get involved in, the, in a larger celebration. So uh, we have a lot of resources on the website that you can use uh, much of this for next year again because since we're right in the middle of the week now but you can uh, link on to some of the social media resources that we have and I will show you our website in just a moment and I also want to share this is a brand new benefit to our five statewide group membership states that you now have access to download uh, here on your left is a poster and on the right is a bookmark and you see there are blocks in the bottom there where you are able to add information about your own library so this is a downloadable graphics template from the ALA store you actually download it on the United for Libraries website and you can uh, personalize these materials and then use them throughout the year Friends of Libraries Week but throughout the year as well so I want to real quick show you a, how you can See, go back over here. So on Facebook, if you go to the United for Libraries page on Facebook, you'll see that you can get, um, let's see, scroll up here to the top. Uh, you can actually take this graphic right here and use it on your own page as well with this nice Friends or Library Burst uh, to use that on the library's website, the Friends group website, or um, any of those other places that you might have social media. And then we also have a variety of posts. I'm going all the way down here, um, of course, promoting Encompass Live here. But I want to take you down to this uh, video right here. I'm not going to play this whole video, um, but this is a really neat I want to play just the beginning of this, if I can get it to go back. Oh, wait, if I can go all the way back here. Okay. Uh, the audio, that's not coming through your headset, so it's okay. through your microphone. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, that's all right. So thank you, Krista. So anyway, go if you go here to our website, this is a collection of authors talking about uh, libraries and what they love about libraries. So uh, go ahead and repost this onto your own uh, Facebook page. And then as you scroll down, you'll be able to see that there are a lot of other things that you can use to promote as well on your own um, website and Facebook page. All right, so I'm going to go back here. So, of course, since we are um, in the middle of National Friends of Libraries Week, I wanted you all to be aware of how you could do some quick celebration and promotion. But our main topic that we're here today to talk about is Book Club Central, because we all love books. All right, so Book Club Central is a new online resource for book clubs and readers, and it features book reviews, author interviews, discussion questions, and more. And it's really a growing in the sense that we had an idea of where we wanted to start, uh, and then we're growing from that and expanding, and we'll see what um, our our users are looking for as well and grow in those areas. We are really excited that we have award-winning actor, producer, and avid reader Sarah Jessica Parker as our honorary chair of Book Club Central and she is an av a passionate advocate for libraries and literacy and as part of Book Club Central she has her own SJP picks and we're going to be learning more about those in a few minutes. 
So I'd like to thank our sponsors here, our sponsoring partners, our book list, Libraries Transform. Uh, if you're not aware of that campaign through ALA, please check that out at the Libraries Transform website, Penguin Random House, and United for Libraries. And our other corporate partners are Novelist and Overdrive. Um, and we really uh, thank our corporate partners uh, and our sponsoring partners for their support to get this launched and to make this, uh, this resource available. So here's a, a quick look, uh, just a screenshot of the website um, here, and I pulled this off with our, our newest pick that was announced last week, and we're going to be talking about that more in a couple of minutes. And I want to go back, I apologize for the switching back and forth, but here, but I want to show you on the site uh, real quick, you'll see things that we have. Find a book club, find books for your book club, how to lead a book club, troubleshoot. Uh, we also have um, here, find books for your club, various book club book lists. I'm going to talk a little bit later about some of these other resources. We also will be developing some new pages on here, which I'll mention later as well. So the site um, has a lot of resources for you, both from the librarian side uh, to help those who are having book clubs in their library, but also for all those book clubs that are meeting outside the library as well uh, mm -hmm. to find resources and then connect back to the library. So, um, what I would like to do now is actually introduce um, Skip Dye with Penguin Random House. He is going to talk about Sarah Jessica Parker and how she's gotten involved with us and um, her interest um, in supporting libraries. I'm going to throw up this slide here. Skip, I don't know if you have slides that you're going to share or not, so if you do, that'll come down, but there's a picture of Sarah Jessica Parker and Stephanie Powell Watts. Skip is the Vice President of Library Marketing and Digital Sales um, with Penguin Random House. He is also a board member of United for Libraries and currently our president-elect. He will be president uh, beginning <laughs> after, immediately after the annual conference uh, in 2018. And we're just so excited. Uh, Skip has been such a supporter for United for Libraries and he's also a very passionate advocate for libraries and believes in the work that friends and trustees and foundations are doing. And, and he's just been a really great uh, a supporter for United for Libraries. So Skip, talk to us about Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, Beth, Skip, thank do you. Have, do you have slides, so slides for this part, Skip? No, I don't. Okay. I don't have slides for this part. I'll have slides for other pieces later no on problem. when I talk about resources. But first off, I want to say thank you to Encompass Live for having me here today. I want to say thank you to Beth for the great introduction and Krista for all your expertise. You are a delight, so thank you. I'm looking forward to going to the YouTube channel and just having fun. <laughs> I'm looking to see what else is on Encompass Live. So SJP, I can't think of a better picture to show Beth than Sarah Jessica and Stephanie together, two lovely ladies, two bright lights. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about SJP, and I thought it would be great for you to understand how this all came to be. I thought it would be interesting for you. Uh, when we first first started talking about uh, Book Club Central and started talking about what the Book Club Central wanted to do, one of the things that came back to my mind is that I had been meeting with Sarah Jessica in our New York offices because she's now started an imprint for us under the Crown uh, imprint uh, that she's going to be acquiring books, and she has been. So one of the things that she in the meeting talked about was her avid love of book clubs, but even more importantly, she basically said, I love libraries. Libraries is where I go. It's where I was raised as a child. She, her family, that's that was her daycare. That was her, her babysitter, was the librarians of Ohio uh, and her family. And she has a wonderful family. And some of you may know of her history of stuff. She is an avid reader. If you follow her on Instagram, you'll see all the books that she loves to read. So it seemed to be a natural idea. So I approached her with this. And first off, she was totally um, 
awed by the fact that she's being even considered. And so it kind of evolved. And the, the whole idea was she has an avid book club. You can see what she's reading all the time. She reads what her kids are reading as well. So every book that her kids read, she reads as well. And she reads all the time between uh, photo shoots or if she's on the set and she's sitting as they're changing out the set, she's reading. That's what she has to do. That's where she has her escape. That's where she has her best mental exercise, she feels, is reading. So then it began. So then we have the process of where she started picking books and started to think about what her first book would be, her first pick. And it became, for her, a daunting task because she felt she had so many great books. And I must admit, and Stephanie knows this, and knows Sarah talked about this, Sarah Jessica talked about it, but when she read Stephanie's book for the first time, she knew it. She had it. She knew what it, the voice. She saw what would be brought to bring this, this talent to hopefully a different level, and she wanted to introduce it. But she also felt it was, a, it was a book that was rich for book clubs. She read it for her own book club. It's something that she still feels passionate about. And what Stephanie was able to capture, and you'll be talking to her later, I think you'll all agree, if you've not read it yet, you should. But if those who have read it as I, it does, it's, transfix, it's transfixing. It takes you into another world. And um, so I don't want to spoil Stephanie's stuff, but uh, <laughs> going back to the book club. We're going to do four picks a year, maybe five. It depends on her schedule and her time. Uh, but also, she just launched her newsletter, which we'll talk about later. But her newsletter is going to be talking about not only the picks, but also at the same time what's exciting for her and, what's, and what she is looking forward to learning more about and uh, in reading. And so it may be stuff that may not be a pick, but maybe classics that she reads reads because she rereads them all the time. So there's a lot of fun things that the newsletter letter will provide. And Book Club Central is a great resource that is only going to evolve to be more. So I'm, I, I think that kind of gives you a little insight of what's going on. Um, she is a big fan of United for Libraries. Uh, she has now become an honorary quotation marks, board member. Uh, we've, we've kept her from having to attend the strenuous roles of our, our fascinating board meetings, but she has been very active in fundraising. Mm -hmm. So she has been doing a campaign right now that goes back to Celeste Holmes. If some of you may know who Celeste Holmes was, but during, after the war, she did a, people would want the equivalent of a photograph from her. And so she would have a, her photographs is celebrities used to carry them around, she'd sign them and pass them out to people. But she would say, I would like you to donate a dollar because I would give this to, and I, which was Celeste Holmes because it would save the children. So SJP, I mean, Sarah Jessica always gets asked for selfies. So she said, you know, I'm going to ask for money for United for Libraries. So that's what she's been doing. So literally, she'll come out of a restaurant and she'll be you know, the paparazzi is there, but then all of a sudden all these people will come with their iPhones and want a selfie, and she'll say, I'm happy to do it, but I need you to donate a dollar to United for Libraries. And so she's been collecting dollars and changes and euros and all different currencies, and it's been pretty exciting, and she is loving doing this. But it goes back to her passion. Uh, she's very active with her own libraries. Her her mother is active in the library as well. The importance of a friends organization. She sp she understands and she definitely sees that what needs to happen right now with advocacy is important for libraries. She is frightened, as some of you may have heard her speak about the 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 current atmosphere of taking funding away for libraries or libraries being challenged. So that's just empowered her to try to do more. So I think it's a great partnership with SJP, United for Libraries, and with Book Club Central. And I do encourage you to keep on checking out the site. For those of you who are live with us now, you know, please take some time today. And those who watch the recording later, skip through my stuff and just go to Book Club Central. Have fun there. I'll tell you, it's a lot of great times. So I'd say for the Stephanie piece. That would be great. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. 
All right, thank you so much, Skip. And yes, the, the selfies with SJP is very exciting. And because she is so passionate about supporting advocacy, those funds that are being donated will be used uh, uh, to help support advocacy training for friends and trustees uh, so that awesome. we really can move everyone to that place of being a natural advocate. It does not come natural to a lot of people. And, and uh, friends groups uh, have been over the years more of a fundraising group and moving them to understand Understanding that you can raise far more, bring far more um, regular, consistent funding for your library as, as advocates, and still do the fun stuff too. But that central piece of advocacy, and also for trustees, that it's really a part of all of what we do to be incumbent upon us to be advocating on a regular basis. And and certainly she's she's been fantastic. So it, it makes me laugh with the with the euros. And I will say that Pete, some people are paying more than a dollar for those yes. selfies because there were some fifties yes, in are. there too. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes and it's been a really yeah. We had one person try to stiff her and she chased them down so she's sincere about this one yeah and apparently really everybody they didn't take her serious so they ended up giving her a lot more money than a dollar yeah. she, was, <laughs> that she felt bad and she offered to make change because she didn't want them to feel bad and so it was it was quite it was hilarious that is that is, that is funny so I, I want to come back and I you know I've had this photo up here on the, on the screen so and I, it was amazing to be in the room there uh, with with Stephanie and Sarah Jessica Parker this past summer at the ALA annual conference um, and just the excitement uh, and really to hear Stephanie talk so I'm not going to steal any thunder here because I'm so excited to have Stephanie with us and to be speaking with her again and I just want to say that um, here we are what well, Stephanie was an inaugural pick of the SJP book club and um, and then of course we'll be talking in a few minutes about the second pick but really this is a family of authors here this is a, as we grow and and continue along this path with these picks that Skip mentioned I want everybody to know that book club central will be a place where you can continue to come back and find updates about what's happening I'm, I'm sure Stephanie will be sharing a little bit about uh, this arc that has been this journey for her and where things are going in the future uh, but please know that that as uh, users of the site come back we'll be we'll be making announcements about what's happening in the in the lives of the SJP book club pick authors that family of authors so um, welcome Stephanie Powell Watts and and Kristen Stephanie I'm turning it over to you great thanks Beth um, so Stephanie do you want to um, get your webcam going there we go there you are Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. Good morning. Um, we're very excited to have you here with us this morning. Thank um, you. I also, as we, I think we were, people had mentioned earlier too, being fans of The Great Gatsby. I, I am as well. Um, I was an English major, I'll tell you that, before I became a librarian. So um, that's my uh, background. Um, and I have, and I, I feel bad. I have started reading your book but have not finished, so i um, partway through it. Um, so hopefully I won't get any spoilers <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> before I get to um, So uh, the description that you used for um, No One Has Come to Save Us is um, about The Great Gatsby. Imagine The Great Gatsby set in rural North Carolina nine decades later with desperate black people. Um, what about The Great Gatsby inspired you to write this? Oh, I'm a big fan of The Great Gatsby. I always have been. I read it when I was a kid, when I was about 16. And I think part of the genius of the book is that it can meet you where you are. When when I was a kid, I read it for the love affair. I, you know, when, when you're a child, you're you're interested in that. That's or I shouldn't say a child, a young person. You're interested in that kind of thing because it's not something in your experience, and so you're hoping for it. Um, I also read it for the parties and the beautiful dresses and the ideas about identity that are are so prevalent in Gatsby. But uh, when I got older and and started to and read it again and have read it many times <laughs> and and read it again, there are also some um, lots of really compelling issues about America, who is American, who has a right to claim that, and what do you have to do to be fully American? That, that 
those kinds of issues. And so I started thinking about that in terms of my of my own characters. And when I when I first said that, I was absolutely I mean it was I was joking. I was absolutely joking. Um, but but I do really feel like that the the themes of Gatsby, the idea about ideas about nostalgia and about returning to the place where you started and hoping that the past has not changed so significantly that you can't find a way forward. Uh, I feel like that those themes were part of my book, but uh, as in terms of story, probably not so much. <laughs> No, I can see that in the book reading it that you can see, you can feel that the connection there how it's how it is similar to to the great Gatsby and in yours. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, yeah, it is a different story, but it's in the background, I guess. Is I can tell that it's what is going on, yeah, that you were thinking of that when you were writing it. Absolutely. Um, what kind of topics do you think that hope that book clubs will explore when discussing um your book? Um, you mentioned some already, but um, what kind of things are you hoping they might get more bring to, bring to the surface, I suppose? <laughs> um, there are a few things that um, I was really interested in when I was writing the book, and one of them is the kind of generational divide between uh, the Ava, who is who is a child, although she's right about 40, and her mother, Sylvia, who is um, around 70. Um, and there is, there's, there's always a generational divide, but it is even more so when the world has changed so significantly. Sylvia is part of a generation that includes my parents, who never went to school with white people, who lived uh, right at the, the end of uh, institutionalized Racism, institutionalized Jim Crow, and so they have a very different experience in the same kind, in the same landscape that I grew up in, and so I wanted to explore that that idea. How much do you do you um, know? How much do you think you know? And uh, how much is it important to know about that past to go forward? Mm -hmm. And so that was something that I I really that was really um, key to me to for the book. I also. Um, I was thinking about loneliness, and there. Uh, this is not something particularly in books about or by African Americans that we talk about that much. But the um, because there's usually a big boisterous family that's kind of um, you know um, boosting the, the characters or tearing them down, one or the other. But and there's often a church, you know, a church body and a, a church life that is key to the to the protagonist lives, but a lot of people don't have either of those things, and they're living in a in certain kind of isolation, and I really wanted to talk about that. Um, what do you do with that sort of, of loneliness in your life? And a lot of people are living in a kind of lonely space. I mean, there are some people who, if, if after they go from work, they don't talk to anybody. Uh, until they go to work again, or and if they don't go to work, they don't talk to anybody. And of course, we've um, we've been hearing about it's become prominent news about the elderly being uh, lonely. Many people not having those connections that we either hope that they had in the past, or hope that were, was a part of our landscape in the past, or um, or and it actually was for a lot of people. So you know that's an um, an issue I wanted to talk about. And I was also interested in the whole concept of um, the change of life. And when, um, when I was a kid, I thought, you grew up, you went through puberty, you hit middle age somewhere, and there was the change, as, uh, as my, my grandfather would say. And then, you, um, and then years later, you were an old person. And that's it. And those were the changes that you went through. And um, it's just, um, you're always changing. There's always um, there's always something new that is causing a change in your thinking and a change in you as a person. I have a friend who who, um, who is also a writer, and she said, "You're always coming of age." And uh, one of my characters is seeing that for the first time. When the uh, the older character, she she thought she had it down, and every time she thinks that, <laughs> something else happens that proves to her. No, you're changing, and you always will be changing. It's a gradual thing, and it's not as defined as it sounds like when it's described as your different ages. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's different for each person as well. So mm -hmm. it's good to read about someone else going through it in a different way than maybe you are. 
That's right. That's right. You know, the um, probably the other thing that I feel like is um, a big part of my book is it's set in, in rural North Carolina and is set during uh, a time when the factories are closing. There's a, there, and most of the factories, in at least in the western part of the state, were furniture factories. And so um, if you've ever watched The Price is Right or um, any show like that, the Earnhardt and Hamry and Thomasville and those big names, that was the furniture um, that it, we, we furnished the world. And so um, so many of the fa those factories are closed because of mechanization, because of globalization, um, because they are just closed but because they've moved somewhere else. And so but so there's not a lot for the for people to do in that area of the country. And we've seen this sort of thing all over the country, particularly in the Rust Belt, but also but really in the South. And so um, what do people do when the kind of the lower the the lower rungs to the in the ladder of success are gone. You know how do you get up there? Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing I wanted to to think about in the book. Absolutely, it's not going to be the same as it was for your parents or your grandparents necessarily. Right, right, absolutely. Um, so since we are about libraries here, of course, um, can you talk about the role that libraries played throughout your life, per, your personal life? Oh yeah, I love libraries. <laughs> I'm uh, one of five. I'm the oldest of five. I have four younger brothers. And oh wow! I, yeah, I know. <laughs> don't, don't do that, by the way. If you know, if you're planning your life, don't plan it that way. <laughs> it's crazy. But um, but by um, my younger brothers and I, when my parents got divorced, my mother moved around quite a bit. And this is, I thought that I was the only one, but this is actually not um, uncommon. Uh, this is, a, a, or um, I've read about people like um, the Hillbilly Elegy, uh, Vance, and W. Kamau Bell, and just a, a number of people whose mothers, who single mothers moved around a great deal. And, and I think it's, you know, I think it's trying to find that place that fits, you know, that, uh, that if you can find the right house, you can find the right life. And so that's what, um, that's what happened with my mother. But no matter where we went um, as a kid, we always found the library. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a place that was always welcoming to us, where we felt like we, we belonged. It, um, Sarah Jessica Parker said and, uh, um, when I met her this, this summer uh, that it was shelter to her. And that's how it felt uh, to me, too, in addition to being... The, a place where you could learn things that you had no ideas about before, which is which is remarkable and a, a wonderful thing in and of itself. But just to be that kind of shelter for people is um, it, it's such a it's such a blessing, and it was uh, it was for me. Mm -hmm. And when I was a child, I know my um, both of my parents worked. My mom worked on Saturdays, and my dad would take my sister and I to our local public library, Saratoga Springs, New York Public Library. Every Saturday, that was a thing, and I just have memories of that throughout my life. Dad taking us there. We spend the, a few hours there, looking through things, reading through everything. Take it home, come back the next week. That's it was a, a, a yeah, an anchor. Yeah, that's right. When my mom was away. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, us too. Us too. And we got to get two books a week. <laughs> you know, and yeah, that's exactly our experience too. Mm -hmm. um, and my sister and I both actually grew up to be both to be librarians. I don't. I'm sure there's a connection there. It's got to be. <laughs> that's right. um, so um, Book Club Central is. I'm. I know it's, it's very exciting. I think it is. What's it, what has it been like being the first author, um, the first pick of Sarah of Sarah Jessica Parker's. It's been uh, so wonderful. I mean, it's really been amazing. It's something that um, that everybody recognizes, you know, and is a uh, and is excited about, you know. I mean, and there's there are entry in all kinds of places, you know, with my librarian friends and with my reader friends, with my Sarah Jessica Parker. Friends, you know? it's, That's true it's, from all sides. Yeah. 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 It's, it's been so fantastic. And, you know, one of the things that I know that you guys know, but I hope that every, everybody knows is that Sarah Jessica Parker is a real deal. I mean, she's a reader. She cares about literature.
literature and she cares. When she talked to me about my book, I mean, she really clearly um, read it and understood it and wanted to know things about it. I mean, um, so she's not a figurehead. She was, she really cares about literature and about libraries and about spreading the word about literature. So I was, I was so touched by that. But it's been a, it's been a great experience. I know we had our um, our Nebraska Library Association and School Librarians Association conference was just last week, and we were promoting that we were going to have you on the show and talk about Book Club Central. And there, there's a lot of excitement from people at the conference. We're very excited about the about the the new you know pro program through ALA, um, mm -hmm. and reading your book um, as well. We had flyers we we're handing out and everything. So. Oh, great, great. We, we, here at the Library Commission, the Nebraska Library Commission, we have book club kits that we mail out to libraries if they want to. So um, we have over a thousand different titles now of um, five, ten, fifteen different titles altogether. So if a library is doing a book club or someone from that library, we can just send them. They don't have to try and find ten different copies for each person in the group. We just send them this. They lent, we loan it to them for every money, months they need, and they send it back. So it's kind of a thing that we... Oh. A lot of libraries know about here in the state, so oh, that's great. We're really latching on to this now. Oh, <laughs> We're that's very fantastic. Yeah, you know, <laughs> when you're when you're a writer, you're trying so hard to communicate. You know, you want to be part of, of a conversation and a part of a contemporary conversation with peers. And so, of course, you know, it's in it's kind of counterintuitive. I want to communicate, so I write this thing and pass it over and never see you. You know, that, that kind of thing. But you do. That's your that's your impulse. You really mm -hmm. want to talk to people. And book clubs give you that literal space to be able to talk to people and say, I read this thing. I was moved in this way or that way or I, I understand this but I don't understand that or tell me what you think about how this is impacting our world I mean it's just such a wonderful opportunity for people to literally communicate yeah I didn't get this part of it did you, can you explain to me what you thought about it when you were reading it mm -hmm. right exactly um, and that's okay. You don't always have to all, you know, understand or like the same book too, which is interesting. I've I've heard we we've done some sessions about book clubs, and I know it's been said that when there's um, it's more interesting when there's disagreement or differing right. viewpoints about what the book was, rather than yeah, we all loved it. It was an awesome book. Right, <laughs> right. So something like yours is gets a lot more more talk going. Yeah, it's great. Right. Um, so do you have any picks for um, uh, book clubs, your current picks for books that you think people might want to read? I do. Add to their list? I do. I have a couple. Um, one is The Ninth Hour, the Alice McDermott, her new book. Um, have you read that, Skip? Uh, you're, like, what? Skip, you got no, we don't hear you. You're, you're, your audio's out, it looks like, Skip. You might need to try and reconnect again. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you might have muted okay. yourself, Skip. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. It it is a wonderful book. I mean, Alice McDermott is hard to go wrong, um, but it's it's just a beautiful meditative book, and it's about Brooklyn nuns, you know, which you know might not be the, on the surface at least the most exciting kind of topic, but the but the stories are really wonderful um, about this extended kind of intergenerational story about the nuns, and so that that's one I've I've um, I've recently read that I really love and I think could provoke a lot of conversation. There's another one that's a little bit, um, uh, well, I'll just, I'll just describe it. It's, it's called This Could Hurt, and it's Jillian Medoff, and um, it's a book about human resources. It's, it's fiction. It's a novel, and it's uh, about a human resources department, and there are a number of people, a uh, number of voices, people who are part of the department who are who get to speak in this book. And it sounds, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't sound like it would be riveting in, in some way. I mean, it's about human resources. But it's fantastic. I mean, and the, you know, if you've ever worked at a at a corporation, even a mid-sized corporation, you will recognize so many of the people, but she's fleshed them out in such beautiful ways. And so they become real people and not just bureaucrats with stamps and you know so it's Characters a of themselves yeah right, exactly it's a it's a lovely book um there's a, a book of short stories that i really that has been my go-to this summer recommending and it's um 
Uh, what it means when a man falls from the sky is the Leslie Arima book, and it's a uh, it's short fiction. It's really wonderful. Um, and then probably the 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 other thing about Leslie's book is um, it's about uh, immigration and about immigrants, and it's about trying to negotiate uh, when it is when you're one thing as opposed to the other. Um, and mostly the, the characters are from Africa or have parents from Africa, and it's it's a lovely book. The other is uh, 12 Miles Straight, uh, Eleanor Henderson book, and it's about um, a couple, it's about twins, and one is very light and one is not, and their trajectory through life um, and some um, some harrowing experiences. But it's, it's a really well-told story, lyrically really well-told. Awesome. Sounds good. I've got to add things to my list now of more things <laughs> that I don't have time to read. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, well, thank you very much, Stephanie. That was that was great. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up this little interview section about Book Club Central or what you're going to be doing next? Oh well, just thank you so much for having me, and I so I so appreciate this platform, and it's been uh, a thrill to get to meet and know so many of you, and thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Skip. You're <laughs> welcome. Thank you, Stephanie, for everything. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And, uh, and I hope, uh, will you, are you okay if we put up on Book Club Central, people see on this webinar anyway, your, your list of suggestions of book club titles? Can we please oh, put that It up? would be great. I would love, I would, I would love it. I was like frantically writing down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stuff. So I would, for my own benefit, if yes. you could, that would be great. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll pull that back off of here and uh, we'll get that promoted out. I'm, I'm excited. I think that one about human resources is going to be great. And I imagine that it's a fantastic too. book club talk because <laughs> it represents so many different voices and people can right. talk about their own experience and corporations and where they've worked. Right. Uh, that sounds really amazing. Something so. unique, a unique, a unique setting and yeah. for a story, I think. Yeah, something yeah. out of the ordinary that people will be intrigued about, I think. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Um, I, I just wanted to add to that. Um, I hear, I am hearing this more and more, like when you both were talking, Kristen and Stephanie, about the library and what that was for you as a child. Um, that It was for me, my dad was in the military and we moved around a lot, many, many times, um, often for short periods of time. And the first thing that we did every place that we moved was get a library card. Uh, right. If there was a base library, we'd go there, but we'd also go to the public library because that's where you get to know the pulse of your community, where you are, um, what's happening around, but you also get introduced to your community as well. So mm -hmm. I think, um, and I, I again, I'm going to tie this back to advocacy. These are the stories, the passion that we bring when we talk to other people about libraries and what right. libraries mean and what they re represent for us. And again, it's it's the the most important thing is that they're there and they exist and they're there for us always and from c cradle to grave, really mm -hmm. and truly, they're there. Mm -hmm. Uh, for us in, in any way that we need and as uh, as we're coming of age I love that comment that you're always coming of age in a new place in your life yeah. and the library is there for you as a resource as you are going through that um, so just amazing so thank you for that great interview um, and I know we're gonna have some questions at the end from from the audience yes, um, yes. if anyone does have any questions I should have mentioned this earlier too you can type that into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and we will um, grab those at the end and ask for anyone who is here um, Beth Skip, Stephanie, yeah. and Jennifer, who's yet to um, speak, yeah. Great. Well, I know we have we still have a couple more things to talk about, so I'm going to bring Skip back on, and he's going to talk about uh, the newest SJP pick, which was announced last week, Exit West, and he's also going to talk about book club resources that are on the Penguin Random House sites, and of course, it will be leaking to off of a book club central, and then after that, we're going to have uh, Jennifer Hart from HarperCollins, who's going to talk about book club girl and their uh, book club resources as well, because really, there is so much out there, and and the point of book club central is to bring all of this together for our book club leaders, those who are in book clubs, to find all these resources in one place. So you'll find it's it's not just HarperCollins and Penguin Random House, but all the publishers out there that we are working to bring all those resources together free uh, for people to find and use. So Skip, talk to us about, about the newest pick. I, I'll be happy to. I'm going to go ahead and show my screen, share it yes. if I could, so yep. make sure that goes up. I hopefully there you go. 
yep. so you can see it. So the yep. next pick is Exit West. Um, it's uh, by uh, Motion. I mean, I, I. I, I've got the link here for Book Club Central and the SJ Pick area, so we can go and get more information there by going to to the website. But in it, she talks about why she chose this book, and it's a. And I know when we were talking about it, and she has a group of uh, there's a group of librarians uh, and who are meeting and who talk about all the books that she's reading and she wanted to have people that she could have a dialogue with so we have a sort of a you know we sort of reading the books and this was a book that we all was just came back to it was, it was a haunting tale of this couple who is in a in this this country and this city unnamed country unnamed city where there is a lot of violence and they are basically a story of of immigration. It's a story of love. It's a story of the urgency and the passions around it as the world is collapsing around you and the costs. And when they have the opportunity to walk through a door, both literally and figuratively, into this new world uh, with just them, it is a harrowing experience, but it really is poignant right now and I know that for Sarah Jessica in she felt this was an important book for people to read next she thought that you know after Stephanie's book she wanted to continue to have interesting voices she wanted to have interesting experiences and I think Exit West does that for us so I hope you guys get a chance to go and explore Exit West it is a great book it is a wonderful read. It was shortlisted for the Booker. It did not win. Another one of my favorite books did, so it's always good. But I do hope you get a chance to go and explore this book. So next, should I talk about some of our resources at Penguin Random House? or about yes. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So I'm going to share something else, and um, so if we want to, uh, hopefully you can see this uh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I can share the whole screen a little bit for There you go. Uh, Looks perfect. Perfect. Yep. Okay, what I want to talk about, a couple of things, I'll try to be quick. <clears throat> Borrow, read, repeat. This is a monthly newsletter that we produce. It is talking about not only Penguin Random House titles, but it's talking about everything, all the books that we're reading. Um, in this collection and we have the tiny URL, we really suggest to sign up. We have a lot of librarians, we have a lot of patrons, we do a lot of outreach on this, but it's a great way to find new books and we give a lot of excerpts there from our books but also other publishers. For our, for our being, you know, Penguin Random House centric, what we have right here is we do a book club regular brochures that we have both printed but also we have them on Scribd and you you can definitely go and download them as well but we have a tiny URL for this in it we also have all the book club questions as well and we also tell you what have been the most popular book club selections in libraries so you can see what other people are reading as well I don't mean to go quick through everything, but one thing that I do and uh, joined up is called the First Look Book Club. Some of you may know Dear Reader, the website Dear Reader. We started working with her in creating our First Look Book Club, and this is basically new titles that are coming up. This is a this is from as we say here, mysteries to memoirs to literary fiction to YA, YA crossover, uh, sci-fi. It's been exciting. The this is for me. I read this every morning. I sign up for it. You get a little snippet. It's perfect for me for my commute into work. Uh, I take a train. I'm not driving, but I'm reading on my phone. Uh, <laughs> that would not be pretty. But from this, though, I get an idea, and, and I get to read something that I may not read otherwise. And so you get probably about the first 50 to 60 pages that you get to read, and it's wonderful. Uh, but I highly recommend signing up for it. It's available for everyone. The tiny URL is there, the First Look Book Club. Uh, it's really been a great resource for me and for my club. 
We also do uh, a regular sampler of debut fiction that we do. We give out, this is a printed sampler, but also at the same notion, it is a, a digital as well. You can download it to to your e-reader, et cetera. This is a, give you an idea what you dip into some new books coming out there, only debut authors. Uh, one of the things that Sarah Jessica loves is the feeling of discovering an author. She likes the comfortability, we talked about this, of, of people that she knows, but in some ways she loves to hear new voices, and so this is a, a great way to get introduced to, to those new voices. Another thing that we started up called was, is called Ask a Librarian, and I know some of you online may already join this already. It goes every Thursday from 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. It's open to everyone, and it's basically hashtag Ask a Librarian on Twitter. I had loved, I just finished reading um, Stephanie's book, I, I want to know what should I read next, and librarians all across the country chime in and give you book recommendations. So this is one place where you can actually go and get personalized book recommendations, and I'll tell you it's a little fun because I've tried to be a trickster. Say I'm looking for a book for my mother who only likes books set in Alaska but loves it to be, she loves also the same time she loves mysteries, and she also loves things that are, you know, trying to freak them out. But I usually fun to see what people get. And I, I think that everybody can join it. And again, it's hashtag ask a librarian. Try it out. It we we it, it always trends on tr Twitter every Thursday between this time. So it's really a great way to get great recommendations. And finally, I have to end with, you know, of course, Book Club Central, which I think is going to be the best single resource for book club materials that anyone can find. And here is just remember, we have the sign-ups there for how you can sign up, but also read with SJP the newsletter that she's doing. This newsletter, it's a really exciting endeavor with her. She's very excited. She's very committed to be a participant here, and I think that really will give a, a – books and we'll talk more about the, more than just her pick it'll be other things that she's reading and also recommendations from a lot of her friends you'll start seeing here too so I hope that gives you an idea of stuff I tried to be quick and if you have any questions but um, there you have it Great. Thank you so much, Skip. I love that because librarians know all. I'm, I'm not much on Twitter, but I'm going to give it a try just for that. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's great. Yeah, so Stephanie, join. <laughs> even Stephanie, just come on, do hashtag Ask a Librarian. <laughs> yeah. Get in there. Yeah, yeah, even that's just a great recommendation. What's, been, what's being said, not to ask my own questions. I'd like I, to yeah, exactly. Oh, all I'm right, a lurker. Well. I'm a lurker. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now uh, we also want to welcome here Jennifer Hart. She's been very patient. Um, she is the Associate Publisher and Group Marketing Director of William Morrow, and she's going to be talking about Book Club Girl and the resources that are available through there. And again, I'll just remind everybody that uh, we are building these uh, pages on Book Club Central where we'll be linking off to all of these other great resources. So you can always find these at the various publisher websites, but come see us first and, and link off to there as we really will be that central resource for you to find everything. So welcome, Jennifer, and tell us about Book Club Girl. Okay, well, I just want to jump in for a second here first. Uh, Chris, this is Krista. Um, just so you know, we are getting close to 11 o'clock. Okay. Um, Central time is our official end time, but um, we did start a little late, and um, we will go as long as it takes to get through all of Jennifer has to say and anything else we're um, talking about today. Um, that we don't have to cut off at exactly 11 a.m. Um, this Great. is our software. I run it, so um, we'll go as long as necessary. If you, as an attendee, need to leave because you only allotted this hour, that's fine. We are recording, and you'll be able to catch anything you missed um, later when we post the recording to you. Right. It's hard to get people to stop talking about books. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's great. We, we can go as long as we need to. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Krista. I appreciate you um, letting everybody know that. And, and all right. Back to you, Jennifer. Okay. Thank you. So just confirm. Um, can you hear me? And are you seeing the screen that says Book Club Girl at the top? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So thank you so much for having me. This was a delightful way to spend an hour rather than sitting in a meeting where we also talk <laughs> about books, but in a slightly different way. So this has been a real treat. I really appreciate you uh, inviting me. So I wanted to tell you a little briefly about Book Club Girl. I won't take too much um, time to do so. So Book Club Girl is a blog that we launched um, back at HarperCollins um, several years ago as a way to really pull together all the resources that we have for book clubs and also as a way to showcase all of our authors who are great for book clubs in terms of 
posting excerpts, author Q&As, author essays, behind the book stories, and things like that. But it's really grown out of this blog. So what you're seeing now on the screen is the is the blog, but it's really grown now that with the you know uptick of social media, um, and is really a vibrant social media platform as well. Um, we also have a newsletter. The newsletter sign up is right here um, on the top screen. We send this newsletter out twice a month, and it's filled up with book giveaways, excerpts, early looks at books, um, and author Q and A's. All of our posts are obviously um, here on the blog. Um, but what's really almost the more vibrant part of the community now is our Facebook page, which is um, nearly 200,000 people at this point, which is pretty terrific. Hang on, I'll show it to you, not in the admin view. And this has been a great place for us to post excerpts, um, you know, news of new books coming out, books that are coming, you know, going to be movies soon. A lot of book clubs like to pick those because it's a great thing to, you know, read the book and then go see the movie um, as a book club. And what we find here is that we have a really great community of readers who are constantly commenting on our posts, recommending things to their to their friends. So it's been it's this has been, I would say, the most sort of super active part of the Book Club Girl platform. Um, we're also on Twitter and Instagram, and I think I need to get in on that Ask a Librarian Thursdays because that sounds fantastic. Um, and we also have a series of podcasts. So if you go, if I go back over here, you can click to this off of our um, Book Club Girl page. Hang on, I'm, I've got you guys here. My, I can see you guys. Hang on, let me just close that. Um, we have a series of interviews that we've done with authors over the years from Laura Lipman, Jacqueline Winspear, Adriana Trigiani, and more. And these are terrific resources for book clubs to listen to, whether you, you know before you sit down to talk with your you know, with your club um, or or at the club. If you want to have an author call in but they're not available, this is a great, um, you know, thing that you can do instead. So we've really tried to sort of pull all of these things together into into one place and it would be great to be look, um, to be linked off of um, Book Club Central as well. And in addition, all the reading group guides that we've created for our books are on the book page on harpercollins.com. So if you're ever looking for a book club uh, reading group guide, you can always find it on on that page. So I think that's a very brief but thorough overview of Book Club Girl, and um, I just want to say that uh, I am also a lover of libraries. Skip and I share um, two towns and some great libraries locally that uh, we frequent a lot. So we're very lucky in that regard, and it's a real pleasure to be able to talk to you guys. Great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I, I, I can't wait to go check out those podcasts. I want to say another one of my favorite resources from HarperCollins is the Library Love Fest uh, page on Facebook as well with uh, Virginia Stanley and, and her staff. Um, I don't know if you can bring that up real quick. Yeah, here we go. They, yeah. they are <clears throat> they are funny. <clears throat> I love Virginia, but <clears throat> they are really funny, and they put some funny, funny videos out there um, with some of their recommendations. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, lovers of libraries there, too. So do check out everyone, Book Club Girl and Library Love Fest. And, of course, every all of this will be linked from uh, Book Club Central. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. All right, so um, I, I want to get to the Q&A, and uh, for anyone who has any questions, so... Just to real quick to say some of the other features that are on Book Club Central, we do have something from United for Libraries, which is called uh, Book Club Choices. Let me go back and show my screen again here and go back out to the site. So Book Club Choices is a feature that we've had in our United for Libraries newsletter for several years where we uh, look at, it's, it's actually our, our staff or a member who reads the book and does a quick summary and then also explains why the book is a good choice for your book club. And that's a really neat feature to be able to say book clubs who enjoy exploring this theme will enjoy this book. So uh, that is a resource that comes directly from United for Libraries. Another resource that we have <clears throat> is our Authors for Libraries um, page as well, and I'm just bring that up. This is um, uh, authors join this uh, 
our Authors for Libraries program, and it represents authors who choose to join on their own. All of the authors uh, who speak at our various events, the United for Library events at the ALA Midwinter and Annual Conference. We also have thousands of, of authors from both Sisters in Crime and the Horror Writers Association that are also in this database. You search by zip code in a distance from where you are, and it will bring up authors in your area. You can reach out to those authors, uh, talk to them about maybe coming and doing a book talk at your library, or in some other way partnering with your library. Uh, one of the great ways that this resource has been used as well is that it's unfortunate, but it does happen around the country where libraries are still having to fight against budget cuts or really fight for increased funding, uh, both capital and operating expenses, uh, funding in those areas. So uh, authors are a great voice in supporting your library, uh, just as friends and trustees uh, and foundations and the general uh, patron population and those who don't use libraries. Authors are another key group of people who can write op-ed letters, they can write letters to the editor, they can speak out, contact the elected officials and talk about the role of the library in their lives. So if you are in your community facing an issue with funding or anything related to your library, remember that authors are great advocates as well. And we don't just need those um, best-selling authors, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of authors around the country who don't hit the bestseller list but um, also are great advocates for your library and talking about what the library has meant for them in their lives and achieving their own personal goals. So check out Authors for Libraries as well and there's a sister site up here called Library Quotes that uh, you can go and find great quotes from uh, current authors, contemporary authors, um, entertainment, sports figures, historical figures, but great quotes about libraries libraries, literacy, reading books, and these are wonderful to use on your website, in your newsletters, and all in all kinds of different ways. Okay, so that is my wrap up here. I will just uh, go back, of course, check out the United for Libraries website, and um, so uh, Chris, I'd like to turn it back over to you for questions that we anyone might have. Sure, absolutely. Thank you very much, Beth. Yes, so does anybody have any questions? Um, if you have any questions, type in your question section for any of us about book clubs, um, any other questions you want to ask Stephanie. Nobody typed anything in while we were all chatting, um, and that's okay because we maybe covered everything they needed to know. <laughs> um, so do go ahead and type that into there. Um, as Beth had mentioned earlier, for here, uh, for anyone here in Nebraska, we do have a page on United for Libraries. Um, it is a section specifically for Nebraska, and each state has their own section there with um, resources and things for trustees and board members. Um, if you are a Nebraska library and want to get your board um, some continuing education credits or to learn more about how to do things, um, contact us here at the Library Commission for the password to log into the specific, the Nebraska specific section of there. Um, as, as Beth said, we pay for every librarian in the state to have access to these resources, so definitely um, use them for it. Absolutely, and they can also contact the United for Libraries office or email united at ala.org mm -hmm. and we'll help as well. And of course, if anyone is ever having any issues accessing anything, give us a call and we are here to help. We answer emails evenings, weekends, and yes, many holidays. You'd be surprised at the number of trustees and friends who are accessing training and resources even on Christmas. We know mm -hmm. that you're volunteers and you are doing this in the time that you have available and we want to make sure that we, we provide those resources resources. If that, uh, Chris, if there are no questions, I, ha I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, we didn't okay. <clears throat> this came up in a recent discussion, and I think you touched on it a little bit, Stephanie, but I thought I'd uh, frame it in the way that this particular um, idea came up in a discussion about a program idea, and that would be if you were leading the book club discussion for your book, what would be the first question that you would ask uh, the group? Oh, interesting. Huh, that is interesting. Um, I, I, you know, I probably talk about the relationships between the um, the mothers and the daughters, um, and there are a number of relationships. Some that don't that that are not central to the book, but are central to the lives of the characters. Sylvia's mother and the relationship that that she has, and also the mothers and and the the sons. Um, I feel like that. 
I'm um, I'm always exploring in in some way, or I'm often exploring in some way the roles of mothers and the things that we expect from them and the things that they cannot possibly do and this you know this outsized role that that seems to grow ever more expansive and yes. <laughs> larger as time goes on and so I'm I'm really I'm really interested in the roles of mothers that's that's really interesting so I have a follow-up question to that and that would be specifically following along that same idea is there a another one or two titles that you feel explore that same issue and would uh, enable a club to kind of continue that discussion about the roles of, of mothers of any other book that I yeah, would any other books hmm. books that you've read yeah. that you think would sort of help to continue that conversation and if I'm putting you on the spot it's I, I apologize <laughs> but it's a very interesting topic I I really yeah. I, I'm interested in exploring that more yeah yeah I'm i um, I am too. I, I think about this a lot. And you know, have you read the mothers? Um, is that I was uh, going to say the mothers? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's a great book. It is. I have not read it, but it's next on my list. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it it is very much about the what we can what we expect from our mothers and how and the the limits of their powers and um and you know also I think that there's a there's a, a cult of blaming of mothers, and um, and I am I'm so nervous when um, when I'm writing about uh, about them because I am a mother. I have a seven year old, and so that that's I'm sure part of it. And I'm starting to understand in some in some bigger ways um, the kinds of um, the kinds of psychological baggage that I that I have with the uh, with. That, that, those kinds of responsibilities. So I mean, there. So there's that. But also, just um, by extension, this whole idea about what women are supposed to be, and what and mm -hmm. women are in in both personal and societal space, I think is really interesting. And then that pushes the the discussion to another place. I mean, it's a kind of mothering that I think that often we uh, we. Um, are expected to perform in other sorts of spaces too. So I'm really interested in that. You know, and I've, I just thought of, um, you know, I just thought of Gatsby only because nobody ever remembers that Daisy's a mom, you know, and that, uh, you know, that seems that somehow is, is alighted in the whole, um, in the whole discussion. It's, and I, I find that really, really interesting that, in some in some crazy ways, the 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 sort of blame that we put on bad mothering and the the sort of label that we put, she she somehow escapes it, um, uh, and in I think that's I think that's really fascinating because that's the first thing we think of when we we see a, a mom that we feel like doesn't live up to our you know to our standards. Mm -hmm. This is a great theme to explore more too for, for book clubs. I, I think one of the great things about book clubs is you really can take the books that you read and and explore these issues in, in, a, in a somewhat of a safe environment, a group to explore how these things impact us. Um, parenting in general, this would be a great topic also for um, for fathers or parents, to, you know, as couples to, mm -hmm. to talk about these themes and, and then how would those sort of intertwine into our lives. So that's great and I definitely will check out that other book. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really good one. Yeah. And you yeah, know, I definitely have that mom guilt too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and your son is adorable. Oh. I met Stephanie's son this summer at uh, at the conference, and and he he is bright, very bright, and and very friendly and outgoing. And yes, I can't wait to see what he does. I'm very so. proud of his mother. <laughs> yes, very proud. Of him. Yeah. He is. He's my best publicist. We, we go he's into a or something, and he's like, "You should read my mama's book." <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Krista, did we have any other questions that came uh, in? No, nobody typed in any questions while we were talking. Probably doing the same thing as you, Skip, writing down all these books that they want to read. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to go back through and listen and write down that, that list and we'll get that pushed out on the site and through social media and I can't, I can't wait to get this. It's such a fabulous, fabulous session today. I really enjoyed this time and I can't wait for everyone else to experience the, the same uh, feeling from participating and, and talking with you, Stephanie. And, and as I said, keep us posted on what you're doing. We're going to be featuring that on Book Club Central and um, I'm excited about this growing family and thank you for being the, the first and, and all of your excitement and, 
and passion and energy and this has been fantastic. Oh, thank you. It has been such a, a thrill of my life. Thank you so much. Great. Okay. Well, then I think we will um, wrap it up for today's show. Um, let's see here. I am going to share my screen now. Back here. Um, so there it goes. So yes, we'll wrap it up for today's show. Thank you very much. Um, Beth and Jennifer and Skip, and of course Stephanie, definitely for being here. We're very excited um, to have you on on with us this morning. I'm glad everyone was able to to make it. Um, I wanted to show um, this is our Nebraska Library Commission website, but the book club kits that I mentioned that we have here, um, there it is, book club kits. Um, we have a database where we have them all listed here that you can um, search for. So if anyone in Nebraska is looking for them, or if anyone just wants to see um, ideas about where they wanted to um, look for, um, let's see. I'll do a keyword search on. Um, let's sorry, cats. I don't know. <laughs> and you'll see we have. Oh, we just have one. But we tell you how many copies we have. You request it. We include discussion questions. There's all sorts of different resources on here. Um, so definitely, if you're in Nebraska Library, take a look at our book club kits. Um, other than that, that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, back to our Encompass Live page. Um, so we will we have recorded the show, as I said, and we'll be here right underneath our upcoming episodes is our archives sessions. And this is where today's show will be probably later this afternoon, as long as YouTube cooperates with my processing and uploading. Um, it'll be posted here at the top of the list. This is our most recent show about our talking book and braille service. We'll have the recording linked here. Um, any PowerPoints that were included, if you guys send them to me, I can include them here as well and link to them. Um, so you'll have that access. Anyone who um, pre-registered for today's show or showed up on the fly will get an email automatically from me letting you know when that archive is ready and available. And as I said, it is free and open to anyone to watch. So once it's up there, share it anywhere, anywhere you want to. Um, so we're going so to join us. Hmm? We're going to share it all over. <laughs> all over the place, yes. Well, hopefully YouTube can handle it. <laughs> well, my mother's going to be watching this a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> These are our archives going all the way back. Um, we are working on, right now it's just one long list. I'm not going to scroll all the way down and make it dizzy, but we are working on a search feature for this because, as I said, it goes back to 2009. We do this show every week, um, every Wednesday, um, 51 weeks of the year. The only week we take off is actually last week during our state library conference. So um, you can do the math to figure out how many there are here, 400 and something um, recordings in our archives. So I hope you join us next week on Encompass Live when our topic is Google Forms for your library. Um, Megan Boggs is a librarian at our Seward, Nebraska Memorial Library, just a little west here of Lincoln. I'm um, going to talk about the free resource Google Forms that you can use for all sorts of things. There's lots of pay resources you can do to do polls and registrations and planning things, but um, uh, Google has some free items that you can use, and she's going to come and show and demo that for us. So I hope you'll sign up for that show or any of our other upcoming topics you see we have here. I've got all my almost on my November dates on. Uh, December I've got some things scheduled as well and working finalizing things so keep an eye on our schedule to see what new topics come up. Also Encompass Live is also on Facebook as well uh, so if you're a big Facebook user give us a like over there. We post um, here as a reminder to log in for today's show. Um, reminders about the upcoming show when the recordings are, ve are available I post them on here as well. Let's see if I can scroll down. There's a recording from last previous show. So if you're a big Facebook user, definitely give us a like over there and keep up with things. Um, other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to all of our speakers this morning. This is a great show. Um, Thank and you. we will see you um, next time on Encompass Live. Great. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>